How we doing? Thanks for joining guys, good to see you. Give a few people just a couple minutes, a couple, I don't know, a little bit. Got good turnout already, all right, cool. Thanks for popping in everybody. Andrew Marquis, what's up? Good to see you, man. Thanks for watching. Big ol' margarita. It's a uh, Moscow Mule made it a double for tonight. Hope that sounds good to you guys. Tito's Mule, my favorite. Yeah, yep. Removed the beard. First time I've seen my chin since about 2011. All right, guys. Uh, I'm gonna get going here. Got a good turnout, so let's uh, get after it. So this is my Bob Gnarly mouse, right? Uh, I'm gonna work through this guy first, and then we'll do my 64 Impala Salmon Fly uh, second. Uh, this guy is one of my favorite things I've ever come up with. It's, uh, came up with it guiding on the Connectock River and a few days on the Aralic when I was working for Alaska West back in 2010. What was I doing on this day in 2011? Uh, what is it? It's April, probably guiding on the Arkansas River in Colorado. It was a good Mother's Day caddis hatch time, kind of April, May. That's probably what I was doing. Or no, 2011, that's when I moved to Seattle, probably trying to steelhead fish or something. All right, anyway, uh, back to my Bob Gnarly. Yeah, one of my favorite things I've ever created um, that utilizes a little styrofoam strike indicator as the core, so it's super durable, floats, uh, it swims correctly too, which I don't feel like a lot of mouse patterns do. Uh, I don't think they should skitter and skate on the surface film. I think they should swim in the surface film and kind of wake. So that's kind of what this guy does. Um, so there's a finished product. I uh, did a little practice run yesterday just to make sure that I could remember how to tie this because I haven't done one for probably a year or so. Uh, all right, so I'm going to get after it. This is, uh, I don't know what this hook is. This is a size 2. It's a Mustad, a 2X Heavy. It's a down eye. Um, I don't know, it's backwards for you guys. It's Anyway, it's a streamer hook, 2X heavy, 4X long. This is going to serve as kind of the shank that we're going to tie this mouse pattern on. Uh, so, get it started here. Lay down a nice tight thread base. bunch of people waving. All right, thanks for thanks for tuning in everybody. Alrighty, so I had to prep one thing just to save a little bit of time. So this is the tail. This is kind of the first step of the fly, right? This is a uh, Ultra Suede, which is kind of a tough product to come by now. I don't know if Hairline or any fly fishing companies still sell it. I'm pretty sure you can find it at fabric stores. Uh, I have some left over. Uh, I kind of prefer more of a tan color like this one but I've got brown, so we're gonna have a brown tail on this guy. Hey Nick, how are you? Thanks for stopping by. Uh, this is a little weird kind of first step with this fly here. Um, actually, before I tie the stinger loop in, I tie down the tail. So I'm gonna kind of line up the length of my stinger hook there. Uh, I've got two holes poked about a half an inch apart through the tail, and this is, a, this is an owner SSW uh, needle point straights on the flight. Yeah, you could just strip the hair for sure. It's a little bit more of a pain, but you can totally do that. Carlos, what's up, man? Thanks for coming by. Uh, yeah, so anyway, this is Maxima Chameleon 20 pound for the stinger loop. I really like that for stingers. It's super strong. Um, nice and rigid, too. It'll keep the hook oriented. And uh, yeah, owner, these needle point SSWs, those are probably the best hook you can use for any kind of stinger, steelhead fly. Uh, I prefer them. So anyway, back to proportions here. I'm gonna lay this guy out so the stinger's about one hook shank length, right, behind the fly there. And this is sort of a little awkward step, but I'm gonna line that up, pinch everything, and then just get a couple wraps to grab a hold of the suede first. Right, so there's the first wrap. So I've just got the suede secured there. Get everything out of the way. A few more wraps on it. Like that. Thought it was a rubber band. Yeah, it's a piece of suede. Cut that out of there. Alright. Alrighty. I'll get this guy oriented now. 
So pull that guy back, about like that. Yeah, man, SSW needles are the best hook for this, for sure. If you want to lose fish, fish a, a cutting point hook and see how many get off of there. You got to rock the needle points. All right, so that's three wraps right there. That's just enough to kind of secure that and make sure I've got the stinger hook oriented where I want it. And now I'm going to slide this back a bit and just get the length right where I want it to go. That looks pretty good to me right there. What's up, Travis? Thanks for coming. All right, those are a little too long. They're just in the way. Cut those down. So now I'm gonna make pretty much like maximum thread tension. I'm gonna tie this super tight all the way up to near the eye, and then I'm gonna turn this maxima and go back through the eye. I'm using Ultra Thread 140, by the way. This is uh, kind of my favorite thread. I tie with this stuff a bunch. It's just like your opinion, man. Does that mean it's cocktail time? All right, take a quick break. Thank you, Nick. It's a good Moscow Mule right there. All right. So I've got that stinger loop tied down to pretty close to the eye of the hook. I'm going to bend it and take those little tag ends and go back through the eye, tie them down to make them a little more secure. Right there, a couple more wraps right there. Now I'm going to pull that guy back, flip that over just so I can see what's going on here. All right, so that's enough right there. If you can kind of tell where that's at, that's sufficient. That's uh, That'll never pull out right there. You don't need to super glue it. Um, you don't need to like go the full length with a stinger hook. I've seen somebody even go three times. Hey, what's up, there's Rick. Thanks for coming, Rick. How's life in Wrangle? All right, stinger loops in there. Okay, got that guy. Next steps are our little rear legs. Tie these guys in, let me find them, they're there. The legs here, these are uh, just brown, medium round rubber. And it's actually two strands that I'm leaving stuck together. I'll tie a little knot in there, just so it kind of gives the leg a little joint. If you want to, you can throw a drop of super glue on it and that'll keep the leg from coming untied. Uh, I'm not gonna do that and wait for glue to dry. All right, so we've got a little little knot, little joint there. Lengthwise, I want this guy to uh, not get caught in the bend of the hook, right? So I'm gonna put it so the little joint is about halfway back to the bend of that stinger hook. Tie this guy in on my side. About there. Give that guy a little cut. Evo Anglers, what's up, Joe? All right, throw another one on the opposite side. Line it up so the joint, uh, aka the little knot, is in about the same position. Pretty good. Trim that tag end. Rick just got done slaying the steel. Who's surprised that that's what Rick says? All right, I'm going to trim these back legs just so they're about even with the bend of the stinger hook there. If you go too long, they can get tangled up in that guy. So cut them just about like that. All right, so we have legs there on this little mouse. Fly fishing. Oh, Rachel, what's up? Thanks for coming. I know. I probably had a mustache when I met you in Chile, like, 12 years ago. Alright, uh, next step. Get more of this ultra suede for the belly. So this is the underside, so I'm just gonna secure this. A bunch of stuff gets tied in at the same, same location in the back of the fly here.
So the idea behind this little suede piece on the bottom of the fly is that this is going to soak up water, so it will encourage the fly to ride oriented uh, how you want it to with the hook point up. All right, so that little piece that I just tied in, that's going to be the belly of the mouse. Mill said, who makes them hand scissors? These are with snips, right? I always tell people, get a pair of these, learn how to tie with them in your hand. It'll save you a bunch of time. This mustache, that's good, yeah. Got the ultra suede mustache. That's a good call right there. Straight Semperfly. No, I don't know who that is, but these are from Wiss. They're a sewing company. You can also get them from Hairline and Rainies. All right, um, where's my rabbit for the sides of the fly? Somewhere. Did my cat steal it? There it is. All right, uh, I'm gonna use these brown barred guys. I like tan but I couldn't find them, so this looks pretty cool. Feather Forge Fly Chronicles of Cod. You got a cool blog back in the day. I guess you still do. I just don't really look at blogs that much anymore. All right. I'm gonna cut two chunks of this. This will be either side of the fly. All right, uh, lengthwise, there's gonna be some to cut off at the end. This is like two inches or so. What I wanna do with this, we're eventually gonna flip this piece around and pull it forward, right? As you can see in the finished fly here, see how the fibers are oriented? So they're kinda of going back, you know, right? If the fly is swimming that way. So you gotta tie them in backwards because we're gonna flip them around. All right, so I just sort of try to get the fibers out of the way, right? Because they're oriented like that. So pull them out of the way, just kind of pinch it. You can try to get it wet or spit on them or something if you want. Uh, I don't know. I don't really feel like that's always super necessary. So this is my side of the fly facing backwards, right? You can kind of see, you can't see anything there. It's just a big white puff. Hang on. Good enough, right? All right, so there's one that's on my side. I'm gonna do the other the little rabbit strip for the side. This one's kind of haggard, but once I get it in there, it'll be all right. Moscow mule break. What's up, Evan? One of my favorite fishing buddies in the whole world right there. Thanks for coming, man. Hope you're doing good. All right, so there's another chunk of rabbit tied, oriented, kind of reverse, if you will. And again, like I said, this is kind of a big messy tie-in here. There's gonna be a number of things going on, but then we just hide it all underneath a little styrofoam ball. What's up, David? Yo, dude, um, this is pink two millimeter foam. This is kind of the last thing that goes on the back. This is that little top, top layer of the fly. Um, you know, here's a commercial one, kind of the same. This is one from Umqua. Here's my practice one, right? You can write a little message on there, which is kind of cool. Usually helps encourage the fish to eat your fly. Uh, Width-wise on this, uh, kind of match that back gap, maybe a little bit less. I'll show you. You kind of cut a little bit of a taper to it as well. What a mustache, haha, <laughs> yeah, Jake. All right, so there's our foam strip, right? That's uh, about equal to that hook gap. I'm gonna cut a slight taper to it. I'll show you in a second. It's even enough. Happy camper, what's up, Paul? John, hey, all right, so now there's a little taper there, right? What I'm gonna do, turn that around because everything goes backwards here and then we flip it around and face it forwards. So tie that guy in in the same spot as where we tied the belly in and the two sides. Right, so we have the belly tied in there, the two sides of the rabbit, and we have the pink foam strip that goes over the top. It's a bunch of stuff in one spot. Now I'm just gonna advance my thread to kind of the midpoint of the shank find my whip finisher. I'm just gonna throw a little whip finish right out here in no man's land. 
right in the center of the hook shank there. Jay said, have you ever masked in the lower 48? Yeah, for sure. I've fed this fly to trout in Colorado and here in Montana um, during nighttime and daytime, actually. Um, I just kind of look at it as a floating streamer. Uh, it certainly works. It's like lower, lower probability, but you can still get trout to come out and eat these things. It's not just like Alaska or Kamchatka. So, yeah. Um... Yeah, there we go, right? So there's all that whip finished, just like a mess. This is kind of the core of the whole fly, right? It's a, here's a white one right there. You can barely see in there, the practice one that I did. So this is a half inch teardrop float. It's like a little strike indicator. Um, these lake fishing ones are kind of similar. I kind of pulled these out of my lake fishing stuff, right? You see these in your fly shop. They're pretty close. It's like a little styrofoam float. Um, the trick to getting these things to, uh, to fit, right, you kind of have to hollow out the ends a little bit. The hole's more like the size of a toothpick that you would normally jam through there. So I just take my scissors and just sort of grind it out. Yeah, lake bobbers. There you go, Mills. Exactly. What do I use for the tail? Somebody said it's, uh, ultra suede. Um... You could take a rabbit strip, probably, and just try to trim the hair off of it, too. But I like the ultra suede, but like I was saying earlier, it's become kind of hard to find. So, yeah, all right, that guy, right, I kind of cracked this one a little bit. They're sort of fragile when you're grinding on them, but whatever. All right, just got to force it on there. Great. So now that's going to form the core of the fly. Now I'm going to start my thread back in front of it. Now it's just a matter of pulling those four things over the top of the, the little styrofoam float that we put in here, right? So I'll do the belly first. Just kind of get everything out of the way, right? So you can see there's that little tan layer, uh, whatever brown ultra suede. Just lay it right over there. Try to center it on the bottom of the fly, kind of hold it in place. Just capture it with one wrap there, apply some tension. Don't let the tension go until you've got it positioned right where you want it to be. That looks pretty decent, so I'm going to put a few more wraps to kind of tightly lock it in. About like that. The first Bob Gnarly was tied with Sasquatch fur. It was actually my beard hair. That's why it worked so well. No, but seriously, this fly went through probably at least two dozen, if not closer to 30 uh, improvements when I was in Alaska, just trying to get the fly to do everything that I wanted it to, to swim correctly, to fish correctly, to look right in the water, um, to make something that's like pretty much indestructible. It's a super durable fly. One cool thing about this fly too is it skips really well, so a good caster can like skip it under and around obstacles, uh, which is pretty fun. You know, if there's like brush and you're like mousing and stuff, you can kind of like overpower your cast short of your target and you can get the fly to skip really well. All right, so the belly is now tied on there. Now I'm going to pull the sides forward. So like I was saying, you orient the rabbit fur with the fibers what seems like backwards at first because you flip it around and tie it in facing this way. And this is going on my side of the fly now. Same deal as the belly, kind of apply some tension just to hold it in place, adjust it, and then take the tension up and use a few more wraps to secure it there. Have I ever wrangled a delicious bass with it? Uh, I haven't. I should probably try to fix that, huh, John? All right, so there's a few wraps to hold that in. From that, do the other side. Brett, there's a Sasquatch Museum in Bailey. I didn't know that. All you Colorado guys should go check that out. And Rick needs one in all cerise. I'm sure he does. All 
All right. So there's the two, the belly, the two sides are tied in now. That's pretty good. All right, now I'm gonna pull the pink foam over the top. About like that, right? Okay. Now I'm gonna bury a little segment here where I'm gonna tie in the, the head of the fly in a second. So advance my thread behind the eye. Kind of hold everything in place. Right, now I'm gonna bury that little segment. sufficient right there. The Sasquatch Museum is a glorified storage closet. That's awesome. Uh, I need my tan. There it is. UV dub, ice dub, brown. I use that kind of tan. What's up, Brian? Brian Farnsworth and Brett Butson, back-to-back -back comments there, and I bet you guys haven't seen each other in years. All right, so I'm gonna dub this little head with this uh, brown ice dub. It's kind of funny, I have never really even put much thought into how inconsistent ice dub is from one color to the other. I've just kind of accepted that like the steely blue is like really long metallic fibers and this tan stuff's like really short crinkly fibers. And all of a sudden on like these social media things and videos, I've seen like three people complain about how inconsistent ice dub is in the last couple of weeks. I love it, and I tie with it a bunch. Um, it's just weird that it is like wildly different from one color to the next. I imagine they just put a bunch of flashaboo in a coffee grinder or something. I have no idea. 65 bull big. What's up, Keith? How are you doing? All right, let's see where this puts us. A little dubbing right there for the head on this guy. like one one more wrap maybe that should be pretty good yeah that looks good all right so there's a little dubbed head I don't know if the dubbing really serves that much of a purpose but I like how the fly looks with the little built-up dubbed part there uh, next step, right, we'll see the finished product there. There's that red layer in there. So I'm going to cut a little chunk of red foam to tie in now. So similar width to the pink layer there. And I'm going to leave a little bit of it uh, overhanging in the front. That's going to help form the little waking lip on the front of the fly. Right, you can kind of see the eye there, right, got that. A little chunk so leave a little bit sticking out the front that looks decent one wrap make sure it's lined up before you just go right to maximum tension couple I'll throw like three wraps there that looks pretty decent can't believe you haven't hand snagged that owner good form yeah I guess that's a mistake that I only made a few times and then learned how to not hook myself while tying this one that's a, definitely a hazard right there. I didn't even think about that. Maybe if I have more of my Moscow Mule, I can hook my hand by the end of this. <clears throat> All right, great. So now I'm gonna make just kind of one diagonal wrap to get my thread back to this side of the little head that I created. So Just that one little diagonal wrap there, you can kind of see. A couple wraps to create that little segment there. Now I'm gonna fold the pink layer back over the top of that. Don't worry yet, Emily, you could unhook, unhook me, thanks. I just have to drive to Helena. What's up, Eric? Thanks for coming, man. 
All right, so now I'm gonna fold that guy, give it a bit of a pinch right there, and secure that pink layer back over the red. About like that. Kind of see what's going on there. Got the pink on the red. All right, I'm gonna cut that red layer back just a bit, maybe not the total finished length, but just to get it out of the way. Uh, all I gotta do now is uh, legs. Keith puts a small chunk of wine cork on his hooks for safety. Yeah, Keith, well, I like to live dangerously when I tie. All right, again, that's two strands of brown round rubber. And again, I'm going to throw a little knot right in the middle of it, just so we kind of get a little segmented, or whatever, like a, a knee joint or something. All right, there's one. Can you guys hear a little music playing in the background? Got the spits going right now. Saw these guys in Seattle like eight years ago. Super fun show. I was talking with the guy, Austin, who I've messaged with on here quite a bit. Uh... He's a fan as well. Maybe some more of you are. All right. So, got a little joint tied in the leg there. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to go like a half an inch or so and tie it in on my side. Then I'll flip it over and show you how it lines up. Right. All right. Something like that. Yeah, you can kind of see that. Do the other side. Spitz rule. Yeah, right, Eric. All right, same deal. I'm going to kind of eyeball it, line it up so that leg joint is the same length as the other side. One of the advantages of tying on a rotary vise right there, just so you can kind of make sure everything's lined up and Make your wraps with the rotary instead of wrapping that way. I rely on that a lot since I've been tying on a rotary vise for over 20 years. Uh, all right, so what do I got here now? Um, I'm just gonna give these guys a bit of a trim. Those front, the front segment. Uh, I don't want to cut them like right next to the thread wraps that are holding them in. I like to leave just a little tiny bit of a stub there so it's less likely to pull out. Uh, Big Daddy Outdoors. No, this is a Dynaking Excalibur. Uh, I used to tie on a Renzetti Traveler that I got probably in the mid-90s, and I upgraded to this. Um, totally not because I needed it. It was more because I wanted a new vise. Um, yeah. Nice. Good to hear. Another fan there, and bought it from Avid. The fly shop that I used to work at in Seattle. Made a bunch of friends that I still keep in touch with. Like my buddy Matt, who's watching right now. A couple other other guys. All right, so I've got those legs trimmed right there. Um, did I forget anything? No, I think I can whip finish it at this point. I throw the whip finish right where it's at there. I don't really worry about going up there behind the eye. I'll probably just throw two whip finishes in there. So that's like a good four, four wrap whip finish right there. Make sure you do like nice wraps that are touching each other. Um, something that I've always done and only recently I saw Charlie Craven actually pointed it out in one of his presentations. Um, like three or four wraps on it, like a, a good whip finish will be totally fine. If you do, you could do like seven or eight crappy wraps that don't touch each other and it'll come undone. So it's like a good nail knot basically, like you gotta do a clean whip finish, same deal. All right, so that's that. I'm gonna trim the, uh, the foam right there. I wanna leave just like a little bit sticking up. That's uh, a little long still. That pink layer on top too is just for high visibility, right? It's just so, uh, so like the guy fishing the fly can see it. I always try to do something to make my flies more visible. That's, uh, kind of goes back to my guiding, I guess. Like if you've got like an 80 year old dude in the back of your boat, you want him to be able to see his fly. So he has a chance to catch the fish. So I do things like use neon pink indicators and in a lot of my flies, cause not everybody's got 25 year old eyes to, 
to watch their fly out there. Uh, so that's for visibility, and it gives you a spot to write a little message to your, your fish buddies once you catch them. Um, all right, last little steps here, right? I like to take uh, with the little legs right there and just split that so it's like a little, I don't know, whatever, like a little foot or something like that. I don't cut it off like you would on a hopper to get that tapered leg. I just split those guys. You can kind of see. Orange versus pink, uh, either or, really, or lime green. I don't know, red, whatever color. I think certain people see different stuff better. I think pink is about as good as it gets. Um, I've said before, like, I would rather my flies rely on solid tying technique and less on super glue. Like, some guys that I see, this is a fly that you can use a lot of super glue on to make it way more durable. Yeah, um, guy, I can't see my fly exactly, Joe. You've been there. Um, so like, I'm not going to do it right now in the, the name of time, but I'll just kind of point out, right? Like, so you can run a little, a little thin bead of super glue, run it like along the edge, right? Of the, the ultra suede, you could run it along the edge of the, the rabbit strip before you pull the pink foam forward. You could put a little super glue under that little glue there. You could drop a glue where the legs go in. All those little steps will make this fly uh, practically indestructible. There's not a lot that can go wrong with it once you've got it all tied up and if you glue it and stuff. So that's the Bob Gnarly right there. Last step is to uh, cut the stinger or the second hook off, right? That's really just a shank to tie on. I don't really like fishing two hook flies, like all this articulated stuff. Um, Dirty Water Fly Co. Dan Saltow. Uh, I like that a lot of his flies are a single hook and then the articulated part is just like a shank, right? And no hook there. I think two hooks is unnecessary a lot of the time and I think it kind of damages the fish's mouth more. So I'll try to cut off the second hook if I can. So this guy, right, that bottom hook in there, grab my, my needle nose, carefully cut that off, make sure not to nick that Maxima Chameleon stinger loop. Do that right so now that's cut off that is kind of sharp so I'll take this little diamond uh, sharpener hook hone thing and just sort of grind that down a bit just so there's a little bit less of that sharp burr that might cut your stinger loop just try to round it take the sharp edge off there right so that's uh, that's my Bob gnarly that's the first time I've ever tied this fly for a demo. I don't think I've ever done this in a fly shop or in a class or anything. Um, yeah, so there, there you go, right? That's my mouse pattern developed on the Connect Talk River about 10 years ago, Western Alaska, when I was guiding for Alaska West. Uh, one of the better mouse fishing rivers in the world, I, from what I gather, I don't know. It was awesome. We'd catch tons of nice rainbows. They have the leopard rainbows, which are cool. Dollies love this thing, too. Um, yeah, and like I was saying, I've caught trout on this in Colorado and Montana as well. Um, yeah, so that's my Bob Gnarly the mouse pattern right there. Any of you guys that are watching, hit me up with any questions if you've got, but that's it. Uh, yeah, Bob Gnarly mouse right there. Really the trickiest thing to this is figuring out what, you, what you're going to use for the styrofoam core. Uh, these half inch teardrop floats, like I was saying, are kind of my preferred uh, core, but these little like lake fishing bobber things, it's about the right size, like the small size. Thanks Bjorn, super well engineered, thumbs up from Keith. All right, so that's that guy. Uh, yeah, better have a Moscow mule break real quick and then I'll get into it with my 64 Impala salmon fly. Give me that in Michigan at night for browns. Tie some up for yourself, Big Daddy Outdoors. <clears throat> <clears throat> or have your local fly shop buy a bunch from Umpqua. <clears throat>